Albertans should be very proud of their response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The last three tough months have left us bruised and grieving, in particular for the loss of, of 149 of our fellow Albertans. The deep economic and fiscal wounds will take some time to heal. But though we were bent, we have not been broken. In fact, we've come through it better than most, far better than most. Our health system was better prepared, our response plan launched sooner and was more effective, our citizens demonstrated great civic and personal responsibility, and our infection and hospitalization rates were much lower as a result. Uh, we were able to keep 96% of our economy functioning, 85% of businesses uh, were able to continue operating, and our lives were not as severely curtailed as elsewhere. We've also been able to start lifting more restrictions sooner than elsewhere in Canada and across most of the uh, democratic world. Our first case of COVID infection was recorded on March the 5th. A state of public health emergency went into effect on March the 17th. New infections peaked on April 23rd and active cases peaked on April 30th. We began lifting restrictions on May the 1st and on May 14th, stage one of Alberta's relaunch strategy went into effect. The total number of active cases and hospitalizations has continued to decline even as the reopening has expanded and testing has increased. Public vigilance and discipline stays steadfast. Our protection of the most vulnerable is strong. We have secured our borders and airports against imported infections, and our world-leading testing and tracing system is keeping outbreaks at bay. In fact, we increased testing to an average of 5,000 per day over the last couple of days. To sum up, we're effectively containing the virus as best as possible. And as a result, I am very happy to announce that Alberta is re uh, Alberta is accelerating our relaunch strategy further to open our economy. This Friday, June 12th, well ahead of schedule, stage two of the relaunch will go into effect for the entire province and several activities that we had planned for stage three will now be brought forward into stage two. Uh, this decision is anchored in science and solid data. We needed to hit three public health triggers in order to move forward with stage two. The first target is COVID-related hospitalizations, where we must see either a decrease in those numbers or no more than a 5% increase over two consecutive weeks. In fact, hospitalizations have been going down over the last two weeks with only 44 COVID patients in hospital as of yesterday, and that's with about 1,000 acute care beds set aside for COVID patients. <coughs> Pardon me. The second target is the number of COVID-19 ICU beds occupied. In order to proceed to stage two, less than half of ICU beds dedicated to COVID-19 can be occupied. Currently, there are five Albertans in ICU, which is down from 22 at the peak. That is 12% of our current 50 dedicated intensive care beds. The third target is active cases of COVID infection. As of yesterday, Alberta had only 355 active cases, down from over 1,000 back on May 14, when we launched uh, Stage 1. The decrease has been especially strong in Calgary and Brooks, the areas that had been hardest hit by the pandemic. So this means that Alberta has successfully controlled the spread of COVID-19 since Stage 1 restrictions were lifted, and that's why we're able to move to Stage 2 safely and sooner than expected. Protecting public health and safety stays Alberta's top priority. We'll continue to monitor hospitalizations and intensive care unit occupancy. Enhanced infection prevention and control protocols, including rigorous personal hygiene, two-meter physical distancing, and masks in public spaces where distancing can't be assured, well, all of those things will stay in place. We'll also be launching an enhanced strategy to focus our efforts on protecting the most vulnerable, especially the very elderly and people with chronic health conditions that often make up comorbidities in COVID-related deaths. 
and we will continue vigorously to test, track and trace infections so that we can stamp out local outbreaks whenever and wherever they happen. Alberta continues to perform more, more COVID-19 tests per capita than all other provinces and most other places around the world. And we've expanded our testing capacity even further. Testing is now available for all Albertans, whether or not they have symptoms. And to add another layer of protection for public safety, we encourage everyone to download the Alberta Trace Together app. The more folks who put it on their phones, the faster we'll be able to notify you if you've come into contact uh, with someone who's tested positive for COVID-19, and that means we'll be able to act more quickly to contain local outbreaks. Alberta Health Services has also launched, launched a new interactive map showing where active cases are. This will keep everyone better informed about the level of risk in their own local community, which will help them continue to exercise personal responsibility for their own safety and that of their loved ones. That province-wide commitment to personal and civic responsibility is what got us to where we are today. And it'll be critical to getting us uh, the next uh, launch of a uh, stage of the relaunch right so that we can then move forward eventually to stage three. So with those cautions in mind, I'd like to provide some details about the relaxed restrictions and op reopenings that will now go ahead this Friday under stage two. But let me stress that no one should feel obliged to participate in any activity uh, until they're ready and confident to do so. And that includes reopening businesses that have been affected. So stage two highlights include reopening the following with the basic public health restrictions in place. First, K-12 schools for requested diploma exams and summer school, public libraries, more surgeries, wellness services like uh, massage, acupuncture and reflexology, most personal services like aesthetics and manicures, movie theaters and live theaters, community halls and sports teams, Events and gatherings can also be larger on Friday and beyond uh, in stage two with specific guidance in place. These include indoor social gatherings, including wedding and funeral receptions, which can occur with a maximum of 50 people. That's up from 15 currently. Indoor and outdoor seated meetings, including wedding and funeral ceremonies, plus entertainment and sports, conferences and other events uh, will be able to occur with a maximum of 100 people, that's outdoors. Places of worship can expand their congregations without a limit as long as they maintain physical distancing requirements and other public health protocols that have already been outlined. And the 50% limit on capacity in restaurants, bars, cafes and uh, lounges is being lifted with uh, seating limited to six per table and all of the uh, usual hygiene rules that people are familiar with. Some facilities and activities originally planned for stage three have been moved forward, as I've said, to uh, open under stage two this Friday with the usual restrictions. And these include indoor recreation, fitness and sports. That includes gyms, pools and arenas, instrumental concerts, casinos and bingo halls, which can operate without table games for the time being and arcades and video, lot video lottery terminals in restaurants and lounges. So all of, as I've said, all of these activities must comply with Alberta's public health guidelines, including physical distancing, frequent cleaning, and use of face coverings where appropriate. And there are sector specific guidelines that have been issued on the Alberta BizConnect uh, website if you're looking for more details. I cannot emphasize how important it is to enjoy all these renewed activities while still being diligent about the basics of public health protection, including physical distancing, hand washing, controlling coughs and sneezes and masks in public where appropriate. And critically, of course, critically, if you have some symptoms of or test positive for COVID-19, stay at home and self isolate for at least 14 days. And by the way, if you're in a really doubt dense housing situation where it's not possible to self isolate uh, Alberta Health Services providing support for people like that to be able to get uh, um, if, for example in, in a hotel context uh, to self isolate. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic Albertans have responsibly managed risk making personal sacrifices to help control the spread and keep themselves and others safe. 
I'm confident we'll approach stage two of relaunch with the same adaptability, responsibility, and resilience. There will be more cases, more hospitalizations, and sadly, there will be more deaths. There will be local outbreaks, and some of those may require targeted measures to stamp them out. But if we stay vigilant and disciplined, if we stay dedicated, especially to protecting the most vulnerable, we'll be able to continue lifting restrictions and expanding opportunities throughout the relaunch. As I've said from day one of the pandemic, our responses always need to be equally dedicated to protecting both lives and livelihoods. The restrictions we had to impose to contain COVID had real impacts on both lives and livelihoods, including those with life-threatening illnesses whose treatments in hospitals were delayed, those who lost jobs and businesses, and those fighting addiction or mental illness who lost hope in the future. Easing restrictions and reopening our economy even further is essential to their lives, and that must be balanced, of course, against the risk of COVID. We have to get Alberta working again, restore the jobs that have been lost, and revive the businesses that are barely hanging on. So please support those businesses and other community groups safely, responsibly, and patiently by continuing to respect public health guidelines while you're shopping, driving, or obtaining services, and while you're enjoying recreational facilities and entertainment. I also want to emphasize that although the official state of public health emergency will lapse on June the 15th, that does not mean the end of public health orders. The Chief Medical Officer of Health's orders are not tied to the public health emergency uh, declaration, and her orders need to continue uh, so that we can provide Albertans with the guidance they need to stay safe. But because Albertans have been doing the right thing and acting responsibly, a state of emergency is no longer required. And it was put in place mainly to plan for a potential overwhelming of the healthcare system, which we can be grateful uh, we never came close to over the past three months. In the months to come, we still have the power to respond appropriately to the pandemic. The relaunch strategy is really the starting point of our broader economic recovery plan. If we continue to get the relaunch right, the recovery will be quicker and stronger. Businesses and industry will thrive again, our job creators will start hiring again, and hope will be restored even for those who today despair for the future. I'll close by congratulating and thanking Albertans for their cooperation and resolve during the extraordinary events of the past three months. It's been an experience that none of us wished for and that no one wants to repeat. We've shown resolve and responsibility at every level of our society. Families, communities, and our shared kinship as Albertans will be stronger by our success.